I thought it was appropriate to talk about the one who is the greatest father ever. And he's so much more than that. I've come to know him as Daddy. And it's just so wonderful to have a relationship with the creator of the universe. Amen. Today we want to go through to Romans chapter 8. And yeah, you know, I, I want to challenge you to really open your heart and open your ears to listen today. Because what, what is written here will change your life. Can y'all still hear me? No. All right. Romans 8, uh, chapter, verse 1. It says, Therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus the law of the Spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do in that it was weakened by the sinful nature, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful man to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin and sinful man in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the sinful nature, but according to the spirit. Those who live according to the sinful nature have their minds set on what that nature desires but those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind of sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. The sinful mind is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those controlled by the sinful nature cannot please God. However, you, however, are controlled not by the sinful nature but by the Spirit, if the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin. Yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit. Who lives in you therefore brothers we have an obligation but it's not to the sinful nature to live according to it for if you live according to the sinful nature you will die but if by the spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body you will live because those who are led by the spirit of god are sons of god for you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear but you received the spirit of sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. Lord Jesus, we ask you today to speak your word to us. Lord God, I pray that, that we would be sensitive to your Holy Spirit. Lord, let every person get what you want them to get today. God, use me for your glory. Let your words and only your words come out of my mouth. I surrender to you and what you want to do today. And we give you the praise and the glory and the honor. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You know, Jesus loves you so much. And he has given you everything. You know, God loves you so much that he came down here as the son. And he gave every part of his life. He gave all of himself. He gave up his life for you and I. And he did it because he wanted us. He didn't want us to be handicapped. As far as with our walk with the Lord. He wanted us to have what we needed. He wanted us to have the power and all the tools to live a godly life. 
And you know, the awesome thing about God is this. When we live in Jesus Christ, when we come and we surrender our hearts to him, Paul writes, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Let's stop there for just a minute. There's now no condemnation. No condemnation for who? For those who are what? Those who are in Christ Jesus. What's it mean to be in Christ Jesus? Does that mean we just said a few words, said a quick prayer, and then we, we go out and try to do everything ourselves? Yeah, that's where, people, that's where we fail. That's where people fail in the walk with God. When they, when they go, they maybe they, they're convicted. They, they realize, hey, something's messed up. I've got to have somebody to fix it. And they go and they say a few words. You know, maybe they're at the church altar. Maybe they're you know, wherever, wherever the word you know, convicts their heart or the Holy Spirit works them. And you know, they, they just say a few words, but yet they have not understood that it's a relationship. And so what does it mean when he says there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus? It means that when we come to Christ, we step out of self-dependence. Oh, I know that we, we live in a world that says, oh, you got to fix yourself. you got to... You better do it yourself or nobody's going to do it for you. And I know that, that we, you know, you know, there's a truth as far as we need to get out and do what we can. But the thing we need to understand is this. A lot of times we want to go out and do things ourselves, And then we go and we try to ask God to come and bless it. Or try to say, Lord, I, we get in a bind and then we say, Lord, I need you. And yes, do we need him? Absolutely. I need him every day. I can't do it without him. Amen. But there is now no condemnation for those. Does it say for those who just ask Jesus to come and forgive them and then that's it? No, it says those who are, you know, this little word in is a big word. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. It's about living in Him. Living surrendered to Him. All surrender, that's, that seems to be such a hard word for us to swallow sometimes. We're afraid to let go of control. We're afraid to, that it, if we give up too much of control of our life that we'll miss something. But it's in coming and surrendering to Jesus Christ. It's in coming and realizing, hey, I've got to lay it all down. What do we lay down? Everything we think we are, everything we want to be. I mean, we've got to lay everything down. And surrender to him and live in Christ. So there's now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Why? Why? Because just by saying his name and living, living our own way, is that what it says? No, it says because through, through Christ Jesus. How are we set free? Through Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Through Christ Jesus. A lot of times I think we read these words and we just pass over those little words and we don't really comprehend it. But it's because through Christ Jesus, through Christ Jesus, get it? I'm saying, I'm emphasizing these words because this is the whole key. We can't be free in ourselves. It's through Christ Jesus that the law of the Spirit of life says, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life set me free 
from the law of sin and death. Let that sink in a minute. Through Christ Jesus. What was the law of sin and death? The law of sin and death. You know, Moses got the Ten Commandments. He got the law from God. But the problem was the law was perfect. But we're not. I'm not perfect in myself. No, no way. Amy's lived with me for 29 years almost. She can tell you that I'm not perfect. So, you know, the law, the law was perfect. But I'm not. And you're not. I hope I didn't burst your bubble this morning. <laughs> and so, because we are not perfect, we needed to be set free. The law says this is, this is the requirements that God has for us. And the thing about it is, what God laid out for us was never meant to put us in bondage. God didn't want us to be in bondage, to be you know, miserable. He wanted us to be free. And he, he knew that the things that he was telling us to stay away from were only going to bring us pain and suffering. But because we were not, we were not perfect and are not perfect in ourselves. We needed someone to come and set us free. So through Christ Jesus, through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. The law of sin and death says no matter how hard I try, I can't do it. I'll never be able to live good enough. But through Christ Jesus, that word through, you know, living those who are in Christ and those who live through Christ are free. It says in verse, I can't see this. It says in verse 3, for the law was powerless to do, for what the law was powerless to do in that it was weakened by the sinful nature. God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful man to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in sinful man. Why did he condemn sin in sinful man? Did he do it just to, just to beat us up and show us that we, we're nowhere near you know, what we ought to be? I mean, yeah, he, we have to realize that before we can ever surrender and come and be what God has created us to be. As long as we think we got it together, you know, we're never going to come to him. But he did not do it. He did not send Jesus just to beat us up and say, look how good I am and how bad you are. He came to show us that we need help. I need help. I need you, Lord, I need you. <laughs> I mean, that song is so true. And so... You know, when he sent Jesus, when God sent his son Jesus in the likeness of sinful man, he sent him to be a sin offering so that he condemned sin and sinful man in order. Why did he condemn sin and sinful man? Verse 4 says, in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the sinful nature but according to the law. How are the requirements of the law met? Are they met by by carrying around even the stone tablets, maybe, I mean, you could hurt, come around with a backache. You could, if you could get a hold of them, which you can't get them, but if you could get a hold of the, the original stone tablets Moses had, I mean, you know, if you sit there and you, you know, dotted every eye and crossed every T, then you're never, it's never gonna change you. But the thing about it is, how is it? How is it that we are free? We are free as we live in Christ because it's by living in Christ and living through Christ that the work that he did on the cross puts to death that sin nature and satisfies his requirements. Think about it. He says, hey, this is the way that that I want you to live, and he did it so we could have life, 
And then he says, hey, you're having trouble? I'm coming and I'm going to do it for you. All I'm asking you to do is surrender and trust me. But you know what? I think, I think a lot of times we have a trust issue. Because, you know, we have a hard time believing that if we surrender all, if we let go and we live in Christ, that he will give us the power and he will do what needs to be done to set us free. It's as we live in him. It says, I'm going to read verse 4 again. In order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the sinful nature, but according to the spirit. God sent us his Holy Spirit. Jesus came in the form of the Holy Spirit so that we could have life. He is the life giver. And it says we live through his life in us that the requirements are met and we are free. The mind of the sinful man, verse 6, is death, but the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. Life and peace. So many, so many people are being tormented today. So many people are living on the brink, just ready to give up. But it says the mind of sinful man is death. See, ready to give up, frustrated, discouraged. But the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. What is, what's Paul saying here? God wants you to have life and peace. He does not want your mind to be, to be going nuts. He doesn't want you to be out of your mind or about to go out of your mind. I mean, there's people going out of their mind all over the place. I mean, look at, look at what's happening in the world today. I mean, we're, people are just freaking out and killing people and all kinds of stuff. The mind of sinful man is death. But the mind controlled by the spirit of life is peace. The sinful mind is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those controlled by the sinful nature cannot please God. If, we, if you're still listening to the voice of the enemy, if you're still living for yourself, you can't please God. This sin, this body, this, sin, this flesh does not want to please God. It wants to go out and do whatever it wants to do. And the end is destruction. But verse 9 says, you, have, who, you, however, are controlled not by the sinful nature, but by the Spirit. When are we controlled not by the sinful nature, but by the Spirit? It says, if the Spirit of God lives in you. Spirit of God. How does the Spirit of God live in us? Through the Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit? Jesus said, unless I go to the Father, I will not send my Spirit to come live in you. So the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, is the Spirit of Jesus Christ coming to live in us. And he says, so if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. What is the identifying the identifier that shows that lines us up with God is His Spirit in us, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus. He says, but if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin, yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness. That song we were just singing, Lord, I need you. And he said, you're my defense. It's your righteousness. It's the righteousness of Jesus. That changes us. Oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> I'm not holy. I'm not righteous. Not in myself. I know the junk that's in me. I know what this flesh wants. But as I surrender and allow the Spirit of Jesus to live in me, I'm free. And all that freedom feels so good. If the Spirit, verse 11, if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who lives in you. What is it that brings us life? It's only the Spirit of Jesus in us. Amen. Satan wants to keep us empty. Satan wants us to feed on all the stuff of this world. 
And what does what is the result of that? The result of feeding on the things of this world is that we begin we we keep a carnal mind. We keep thinking and desiring and, and even doing the things that that are going to bring us destruction. But as we live, as we live in and through the Spirit of Jesus, by surrendering our life daily to Him, by focusing on Jesus every day, yeah, He's not He's not trying just to change us so we can wear long dresses and and you know wear a, a blue or black suit and a tie for guys or whatever and look a certain way, wear a certain hair hairdo and all that. That's not what it's about. It's about living a life to where the Spirit of Jesus shines through us. His light shines through us and He makes us beautiful from the inside out. Amen. I mean, how awesome is that? He wants to transform us and He will do it. But we've got to be willing to let go of control and give Him everything. Verse 12, it says, Therefore, brothers, we have an obligation but it is not to the sinful nature to live according to it. If, if you live according to the sinful nature, you will die. But if by the Spirit, how do we live a life that's unto God? It says, if by the Spirit we put to death the misdeeds of the body, we will live. By the Spirit, by the Spirit, it doesn't say that we have to put to death those things ourselves. Oh, you better you better stop doing this and you better stop doing that and you better you better you know look a certain way or do certain things. No, it doesn't say that. It says that if by the Spirit, how do we how do we do it? By the Spirit. By whose Spirit? By the Spirit of Jesus. How does it happen? By living our life submitted and surrendered to Him. If by the Spirit we put to death the misdeeds of the body. It says what? What's those last three words? It says you will live. Oh, we didn't have the verses up there today. <laughs> if by the Spirit you put to death. Hear that? Not by your flesh. Your flesh can't put to death the deeds of the flesh. Your flesh says, come on now. Come on now. You don't want to do that. You want to do this. And I've seen so many people. I've seen, you know, I remember going to a hospital bed with a young lady who had been part of us from, from a little child, even in the nursery. And I remember going to her bedside. And she was in there dying because of a heart issue that came because of dirty needles and stuff. And at one time, this, this young lady God was working in her heart and she was so close, so close to coming to him. But because of influence in her life and even people she looked up to and trusted, let her down and it blew her away. And so she went out into the, you know, deeper and deeper into the stuff the enemy was putting in front of her, trying to find something just to, just to cover it up. And in the end, she ended up, she lost her life. So we can't, we can't put to death the misdeeds of our flesh in ourself. It's only by the Spirit of Jesus Christ. And he says if we do that by the Spirit, we let the Spirit do it by surrendering to Jesus and walking in His power. So if by the Spirit we put to death the misdeeds of the body, we'll live. See, God is all the time trying to get us to do stuff. And you know why he's trying to get us to stay away from certain things and run after him? It's because he knows that there's, there's things that are in this world that the enemy has placed there to be a snare that will only bring death. They bring death spiritually. They can bring death physically over time. But God is saying, I want you to live. Jesus says, I died to give you life. And he, go, and he says in verse 14, because those who are led by the Spirit of God, 
God wants you to be led how? By His Spirit. Yeah. Those who are led by the Spirit of God. They are what? They're puppets? No. Those who are led by the Spirit of God. They're prisoners who are enslaved? No, that's not what it says. It says those who are led by the Spirit of God are what? It says they are sons of God. Sons of God. It doesn't just, it doesn't distinguish and say men and you know, boys, whatever. If you're led by the Spirit of God, you are a son of God. No. It says those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. In this particular instance, Sons means that every single person who comes and is, surrenders to Christ is a son of God in the sense that they have the rights of the son of God through Jesus Christ. Man, think about that. That's powerful. A son, a son of the living God the one who, who saw nothing and said, I'm going to create. And he created a universe. He cre then he took dirt and made man. Then he took a rib out of man and made a woman. Thank God. Thank you, Lord. He is the one who says that if you surrender to me, if you come and allow me to come through my spirit, the spirit of Jesus, if you let me come inside of you and you surrender and let me live through you, then I will not only come and forgive you, but I will make you, as you are led by my spirit, I will make you a son, my son. We are not the son, but we are sons of God through the son, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of God. He's at the power side of the Father. And we, as we surrender to Jesus, we are raised up with Him. And we are seated with Christ at the right hand of Almighty God. In Christ. That's the key. We are in Christ. And that's what He wants. So those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For God did not, for you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear. There's people all over the place that are afraid. They're afraid to go to the grocery store. They're afraid to go to sports events. Whether it be because of a virus or whether it be because of, you know, afraid some psycho is going to come in there and shoot them or whatever, make a pipe bomb. You know, I mean, you know, people are afraid. People are afraid they're not going to be able to afford groceries or gas. But it says, we did, you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear. But you received the spirit of sonship. The Holy Spirit, the spirit of Jesus that comes inside of us when we surrender to him is the spirit of sonship. It's also the spirit of adoption. The Holy Spirit is a seal that he puts, God puts on us that says, you are mine. And it guarantees our inheritance. When does the Holy Spirit guarantee our inheritance? When we live in and through Jesus. So it says, you receive the spirit of sonship by, and by him we cry, Abba. Abba, Father. Abba is an aromatic word. And it is a personal word. A lot of people can be a father. But it takes somebody special to be a daddy. To really be there for you. And it's in Christ. Through his spirit in us. That we are adopted. 
And the spirit of Jesus in us immediately starts crying out, Abba, Abba, Father. Or Daddy, Daddy, God, Daddy. Think about it. God does not just want to be somebody that's pulling the strings like a puppet. He doesn't just want to be somebody that's out there that we call our Heavenly Father, which He is. He want, you know, being a daddy means that He wants to have a relationship. He wants to interact with you. He wants it to be personal. I'm a father. Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. The Holy Spirit cries out, Daddy, Daddy. And, and our father reaches out and says, yes, my child. Yes, my child. I love you. And this is what I've, I've wanted for so long. This is why I created you. This is why I came in. This is why I came down from my throne and lived among you and, and bled and died for you. And now I've rose again so that I can send my spirit to you so that I can claim you as my own. Daddy, the spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. That's the spirit of adoption. In verse 17, he says it. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs. Heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. I'm a father. I'm a father. This Father's Day, this Daddy's Day. How much, how great is our Heavenly Daddy? I mean, I love my children. All of them are grown. Nick's 21. <laughs> Stephanie's going to be 28 this year. And I love them dearly. Mary's 22, graduated from college, going to get married soon. And I love them. There's, I would give my life for any one of them. But I want to tell you something. God, our your heavenly daddy did give his life as he, when he came down here as the son to prove his love. And he doesn't just want to forgive you. He doesn't just want to set you, know, set you free from sin and death. He wants to be your daddy. There's so many times that I have crawled up in my daddy's lap, so to speak. There's times I feel inadequate, which is quite often. There's times it's like, Lord, I can't lead anybody to you. I can't do what you called me to do. I'm just, I just don't have it in me. And I have to crawl up in his lap and, and talk to him, just let him wrap his big daddy arms around me and say, I love you. And I'm not asking you to do it. I'm asking you to continue just to be faithful. I'm asking you to surrender and let me do it. And as you allow me to do it in you, it'll be by my power that it'll, be, it'll happen. Daddy. I learned, I learned that God was my daddy I really began to rely on him when I was 17 and our, our, our earthly daddy went, went home. When he, when he left this earth, I learned, I really learned, began to learn that God was my daddy, that he would be there for me. And today, I just want to tell you that your heavenly daddy loves you and he wants to be there for you. He wants to set you, forgive you. He wants to set you free. But he wants relationship with you. And he wants to live in and through you so that you're not in bondage, but that you're free. It's as we live in and through Jesus by his spirit, as we allow his spirit to work and live in, in and through us, as we have that relationship with him, we are set free. He says that whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Yeah. Totally free. Satan wants to put you in bondage. 
Jesus wants to set you free. And the awesome thing about our daddy God is the more we come and live in him and the more his Holy Spirit you know, draws us close to him. The Holy Spirit, when he says daddy God, he's bringing us closer and closer to our daddy. And the more we realize how much God loves us, how much he is a daddy that loves us, the more we want to please him and the less we're one of the things in this world. He takes the wants and desires for the things that will harm us away from us and fills us with his love and his you know, a desire for the things that are going to bring us life. I mean, how awesome is that? And so today, I just want us to understand that he is a daddy. He is a daddy that wants to love on you. He wants to set you free. He wants to reveal his heart to you. And as he reveals his heart to you, and as you surrender to him, he will set you free. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for all the times I've crawled up in your lap, Lord God. Daddy God. And you know what? The awesome thing about Daddy God is this. He's there anytime I want to crawl in his lap. And as we live in him, then we begin to understand his heart. And he wants you to know the depth of his love. So today I want to challenge us. If there's anything you've held back from God in your life, anything you've been struggling with, I don't care how long you've walked with God. I don't care when you made a confession the first time. If you know there's still things in your life that need to be confessed to him, that you need to be free from, if you don't know him as your daddy God, then I want to challenge you to to come if you need to kneel before him, kneel before him. But let him show you the depth of his daddy heart. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. And we're going to be singing that song, Lord, I need you. As we sing that song, if God's touching your heart, let him set you free today. Because there's no better place than to walk in the freedom that God gives. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord Jesus, Lord God, we come to you. And I want to thank you that you came and you gave us your spirit. And that your spirit is the spirit of adoption. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you cry out through us, Daddy. Daddy God. And that's what you are, God. You're so much more than just our Heavenly Father. You want to be our daddy. You want to be personal with us. You want to have a relationship with us. You want to guide and direct us into what's going to give us life. You want to guard our heart and even heal our heart from the things that have wounded us. There's people here that have been wounded deeply, even by people you love. Sometimes they mean well with what they say or do, but they have scarred you. They have wounded you deeply. And Daddy God is saying, I want you to come to me right now. I want you to open your heart. And I want to heal that area that's broken right now. I want to show you the depth of my love. I want to set you free. Today, if God is speaking to you as we sing this song, Lord, I need you. Then I want you to come. And I want you to kneel before the Father. If you're able, if you're not able to kneel, then... You can stand or you can sit in a chair at the altar, whatever you want to do, but let's let's come to Daddy God and let's allow Him to do what He wants to do in our life. He wants to heal you. He wants to set you free. He wants to reveal His love for you. But let's come to Him right now. Let's sing that song, Lord, I need you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As we sing it, If you know that you need him, why don't you come? Why don't you lay it on?